<laughs> hey guys, JH, welcome to the wind tunnel. <laughs> oh wow. Well, 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 well. Anyway, <coughs> they ever have a tournament in the uh, the Antarctic where they say the winds are always like 140 k's an hour minimum? I'd be, a, I'd have to be a favourite for that tournament because I, I'm so used to incessant wind, and if they have aircraft landing overhead at the same time, that is the tournament I will win. Okay guys, now <clears throat> onward with the, I guess with the excitement of, uh, of Channel Lock and the position that it has evolved to right now in, in, in that I have incorporated uh, some yogi mechanics in it and, and it's changed the swing for me dramatically. I mean, extraordinarily so. <clears throat> I mean, I was hitting it unbelievably good before, well, for me, <clears throat> but now it just seems like I really do. I, I've used the term before, guys, that, that I thought that channel lock could be an infallible golf swing. Well, I really believe it is with the, with the yogi, the yogi um, components incorporated into it and the major plus for me guys without question is the quick ignition ignition move and that is that when I'm in here in here and then I'm in action I'm going it's over now that may not suit everybody and I would suggest that it clearly won't because club players really do overthink the golf swing even good club players I mean I've played with club champions that are that look like they're giving birth when they're over the golf ball. So protracted and painful is the process of setup. Even for good players, you'll see them in here, and it's man. <clears throat> now we never saw that with Mo Norman, and we never saw that with Count Yogi, and they were arguably the two best ball strikers of all time. We never saw that with them. <clears throat> and I think they instinctively worked out that as, as a species and as a human mechanism that we're designed for spontaneous reactionary processes. And I'll explain that a little bit, guys. <clears throat> you don't see anything that we do uh, in life as a human mechanism <clears throat> where it looks like we're second-guessing ourselves ever. You never see that. It just, you just don't see that. You know, the act of putting food in our mouth, you know, combing our hair, brushing our teeth. It's not, I'm going to think about this, or I'm going to, or just walking. Everything is responsive, and it happens spontaneously. And it happens invariably quickly. Because we're designed to operate that way. To respond quickly to to an event. And, and the requirement of, of our our um, components to react to that event. Now, I don't see that the golf swing should be any different, guys. Not at all. <clears throat> and the point I make is that once we've determined where our target is, what club we need to get there, and once we've established the alignment protocol that we need to get there, it's over from there, guys. You can't do any more. <laughs> from that point on. You can't change that golf club and once you're in that address position you can't change that address position. So none of that uh, should have any bearing on what you do from then on. And, and that's just the, the pragmatist in me and the practicality and the, the logical outlook that I have as a person. You can't do anything more after you've established those, those couple of things. So the fact that you can't do that, why get over the ball and mull anything over in your mind that has any relationship to what's going to happen out there? All that should enter your mind and concern you is getting this onto that. And what you have to do with your body to get this onto that. And as I've said before, guys, in channel lock, uh, the target for us is that golf ball. It's not the actual target. It's getting this on that. You get this on that, with the club face correctly aligned and that goes to the target. 
But once you've established your target ship relationship in your address, you can't affect that anymore. The only thing that you can affect is getting this onto that. You can affect that because we can actually do that. You can get these to respond to a thought process. And I do it all the time. And I'm sure Yogi did it, and I know Mo Norman did it. <clears throat> Guys, something else while I'm thinking about it. A few people have said, JH, you, you've moved the ball up. I haven't moved the ball up, Guy. It looks like I've moved the ball up because I do this. I come in here, I establish that, that uh, the duck drinking position here, which is the ball off the trail foot. Then with my protocol now, <coughs> is that the lead foot comes up, the trail foot comes back. Now as soon as I move the trail foot back, it looks like the ball has moved forward, but that ball hasn't moved, guys. All I've done is move my foot from there to there. And I'm doing that because I want to have that as part of the ignition sequence that I have in my golf swing now. <coughs> so, no, I'm, I'm still playing the ball back there, guys. I have to play it back there for channel lock because that's what channel lock is. You have to be back there so you can get in the channel. The only uh, dispensation you can give or can get is you may want to move the ball up a little bit with the driver if you want to hit up on it with the yogi mechanism. <coughs> but because I, I'm, I'm doing this, coming in here, And then getting on with it. As soon as that back foot goes back for me, guys, as soon as that's back there, my brain is triggered to get going. So, so it, it's basically the duck drinking, the left foot up, the trail foot back, and then the club gets slung back in the process going forward in the backswing. <clears throat> yeah, so that's an illusion, guys. And a lot of the times, it's an illusion because of where I stand in front of the camera. I never get square onto the camera. And a lot of times, guys, that's because I'm aiming at specific targets. If I have to stand absolutely square to the camera, I can only hit at one target. So I do change around a lot. Now, guys, somebody made... <clears throat> now, I've come up with something that is fantastic. Well, I haven't come up with it. I can take no credit for it. And I can't remember it. It was on my my channel today and, I, and it might be David Edwards I don't know <clears throat> but it was somebody that referred to me trying something uh, with my yogi uh, backswing and, and, and if it was David I don't know who it was but what he said was well I do know what he was I just can't recall guys I get 250 emails a day and it's just it's so hard to remember everything it's so hard to get the, <laughs> the time to reply to them as well I mean, the, the amount that I get off, off ju just the general comments on my channel are not very many. Um, and, but, but the general stuff that I've got um, and my external uh, teaching and stuff and the students I've got, I get hundreds of emails a day. So I can't remember everything. <coughs> but what if it was David Edwards, what he said was, JH, try this. If you want, if you want to have your, your yogi pull back and you want to have the softness that yogi had, Try feeling that that lead arm is like a piece of soft macaroni. He didn't use that terminology. He said, but have it ridiculously soft, like it's just, it's not even there. It's just, just, it's just something that's uh, above the hand. But don't use it as a, as something that has anything in it related to tension. And I've got to tell you, um, I hit a couple of shots before I came on camera because um, I had a guy here that just wanted to, to see something and and I used that and man it, it is so windy today isn't it in a headwind I, I was hitting this five iron up where I normally hit it with no wind and this arm just felt like the arm felt like this guy's so what does that mean that means if I have that lead arm really soft like that then my ignition move and, and the mechanism that I use for getting the golf club to go back and into place is my trail hand. So it's essentially this. This is doing nothing. That trail hand is just pulling that lead arm along for the ride. 
It's just a great feeling, guys. And man, you, the smash factor you get. Wow. <clears throat> I'll just do a, uh, a, a wet noodle lead arm. The club just goes, the thing, the thing that I'm having difficulty with is how much speed it puts into the club. I'm not used to that much speed. It just, it, it's absolutely hammer time guys. Just absolute hammer time. It just, it just kills the ball. Noodle arm. Feels fantastic. Noodle arm. I really can't feel my lead arm. I can feel my lead grip, my left hand, my macar uh, my uh, my yogi left hand or lead hand grip, but I can't feel, I can't feel my lead arm, where normally I push back with my lead arm, well I'm pulling back with my trail hand. Uh, that, that's crazy, I mean I've had a real increase in my distance in the last week with uh, with Yogi Lock but that's this is another step up this is like putting another turbo and you know, I have a two turbo engine I've now got a three turbo engine <clears throat> that's really crazy stuff guys all right now th yeah if that was Dave I mean that's fantastic Dave I really that's good I'm going to use that Try and hit one. This is my sequence, guys. Here, here. Now, when we saw, uh, I saw a, a video yesterday from Bill Phillips on MMI, and he had Matt Gray on there hitting his new Cobra one length clubs. And he and the boys were saying that Matt was carrying that uh, his eight iron 180, 185 yards. That's unbelievable. Certainly getting some zip. 185 carry for me. If I'm honest, most time that's about a five iron for me. Most times, I can get it maybe 190. But that's a five. But I've got to tell you today, uh, you know, I'd probably be about 200 with with a five iron with that noodle arm. <clears throat> but I certainly wouldn't be <coughs> a 185 uh, eight iron. Might get to a 160. Whereas normally I'm about a 150. Eight on. So here we go, guys. Well, there. Are. I'm not going to compete with you, Matt, but for me, that, that five iron is just. That's crazy stuff. Okay, so for Dave Edwards, uh, I can take no credit for this, guys. So just try us the noodle lead arm. Just feel like it's nothing. Just, just, just feel like it's there and it's no tension. And you just pull this. I tell you what it does do when you do that, guys. It takes all the tension out of this lead quadrant of the shoulder and the lead side of the neck and the whole lead side of the body. This whole vertical axis it really softens it up. I have a propensity uh, on occasions to. To get uh, my, my, my lead shoulder a bit like this and very tense and I push it back and that's how I push my hand back sometimes and that's how I can get that negative load but I can still get that negative load by pulling back with my trail hand against that or just pulling that lead arm along for a ride now guys something else while I think of it Mr X has got this going in his swing and we've all got different things in our protocol, but what Mr. X has got going in his swing at the moment is, is he's got, he's firing the club at the ball. 
he's hitting it in there and he feels like his club's going down under the ground afterwards. A bit of those shots that I showed you yesterday. I mean, he's not trying to, to hit up at all. So again, that's a variation. But what he's also got, and, it, and it's really making a difference, is that he's trying to look under the golf ball at impact. And by trying to look under the golf, golf ball at impact, he's getting a lot of secondary tilt on the golf swing. Now guys, if you get a lot of secondary tilt, which you should get in any golf swing anyway, uh, that's primary tilt, whatever we have here at address, and secondary tilt is what we have at impact. And, and all the great ball strikers and all the tour players have all got lots of secondary tilt at impact because they're here. That's just a function of being a good ball striker and, and having uh, good parametric acceleration. They all have it, but they don't realise they have it. But they all have it. Now, in, in terms of talking about parametric acceleration, the more that you can keep that trail side back and, in, and more side bend you can get at impact, the more the club is, wanna, gonna, is going to want to come this way. It's going to want to come more back towards you. The club head, the club head, a function of the club head going out more towards the golf ball will force this back towards you more. It'll go, get away from that dreaded, you know, uh, grip or handle out to the ball. We never want that, guys. The only thing we ever want out to the golf ball, and Bill Phillips from MMI Golf did a video today, which was a great video, and Bill had a piece of tape down here, and he's saying, you know, I want to keep the handle behind that piece of tape. Well, you're dead right, Bill, and that's how parametric acceleration happens. If you can corral the, 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 that handle of the club here and the club, the club head's going past it, as it goes past it, it pushes the handle back. But what will also help that in conjunction is having more secondary tilt. Now, now what Mr. X is, is, tr is trying to do is Mr. X is actually trying to feel like he's here. And yesterday, it, it was raining him. We went down... Uh, down there under the covers in the rain and he was hitting some amazing golf shots absolutely extraordinary and he was back he looked like he was back over here just right over there it was just crazy so the, the more secondary tilt you can get guys uh, really I think the better off you will be I really believe that okay so I don't deliberately try and do that but I'll try and have a little bit more secondary tilt here Wow. See, I'm still back here, guys. I'm still back here. See that? Now, we've always wanted that in channel lock. And that started out way back in Da Vinci Code days. But I've got to tell you, I never hit a bad shot ever in Da Vinci Code whenever I had that in my mind. Because in Da Vinci Code, we wanted the hands not to go anywhere. We just wanted the club head to go out there. The hands were corralled here like a trebuchet. And we wanted to be like that. And I've got to tell you guys, I never ever hit a bad shot with that action. Not one. Not one ever. It just never happened. So if you can increase the secondary tilt, macaroni arms, increase the secondary tilt. Look at this guys, look where I am here, look. I'm back here. Now Mr X says he's feeling like that and he was just, he's killing it. He's absolutely killing it. And Mr. X has always, and I don't say this in a derogatory way, but he's always had difficulty in maintaining the key thought that he has when he's hitting it well. But this is one key thought that he's having no trouble hanging on to, not at all. He absolutely feels it, and, um, and it was brutal conditions yesterday, and he was just smashing the golf ball. So, we want a little bit to try a little bit more secondary tilt and that will give us our parametric acceleration what Bill Phillips said is absolutely correct if we can get the feeling that the handle never goes past the center of the body and it's only the club head going out to the ball we never want the hands going out and we don't want the hands here we just want that because this is that this is that power produced speed producing pivot point guys if you move that pivot this is one here but if you move this one around you're just losing the ability to get the club, the club head moving because you're moving its pivot point. It's got nothing to pivot around if you move that pivot point. All right, we'll try a lot of secondary tilt here and we'll try the pure, 
the macaroni lead arm. I love this yogi grip. Well, it don't get any better than that for old JH. <clears throat> Look a bit like Yogi here. Yogi used to finish like this. Guys, I, I've watched thousands of hours of Yogi. I can see it in my mind. I know the... I mean, I haven't got the body. I haven't got the, the lie, the type of, you know, physicality that he had. But I know what it looks like. And, and, and you can see how he got that power. And I made the comment this morning to, uh, to William Milne, who used to hang around with Yogi and had lessons from Yogi and knew Yogi pretty well and uh, <clears throat> and he used to operate out of the same range that Mike Austin was at uh, and, I, and I said to William Mill, it must have been amazing, I mean I would love to have seen Yogi and Mike Austin together and hear the banter from those two because they were both always trying to totally run the show so I can imagine and they both thought that what they had was the best in the world and they were too one of the great, you know Mike Austin was extraordinary and I would have loved to have seen a driving competition between Mike Austin and Diogi because I think they would have had the same club head speed but Diogi was a tiny guy compared to Mike Austin. Yeah but Mike, uh, William Mill, I'm waiting for his reply back, he may have actually seen that. Diogi may have uh, challenged uh, Mike Austin. <coughs> Guys, for you people that um, that uh, you know just don't have you know the, the physiology makeup that will allow you to operate that quickly, don't don't worry about it. You don't have to do that. I just do it because it suits my physiology. As I said many times before, guys, <clears throat> I do everything quickly. I'm an ex-race car driver, motorcycle racer, um, and everything I've ever done has always been quick. I talk quick, I eat quick, I walk fast, I drive fast. I'm just that's just me. But if you're someone that eats slowly, talks slowly, and drives slowly, uh, this would be so foreign. <clears throat> but if you watched Yogi when he was young, and you watch Yogi walk around, this was Yogi. He was always really, really quick and walking around, and it was always everything was happening quickly. So he had that disposition himself. Uh, so he was ready to go. <clears throat> he wanted to get the club there and get going. But he had, the <laughs> he had the magnificent rhythm, which I don't have, and the flexibility. Oh, I've got to tell you guys, I've got to tell you, that doesn't get any better than that. The wind here is so strong. And that you would you would seeing that shot, you'd say, there is no wind. I mean that, that is just a ridiculous golf shot in those conditions. That's gone almost normal distance into a you know, 30, 40 kilometer an hour wind. <clears throat> it's just nuts. Okay guys, we'll click here because this is a long video, but I'll come back and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll talk to you about something really intrinsic that I think will help us all. And something we think we do, but we don't do. If I don't get blown away. <clears throat> 